Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IES. I welcome you all to today's session of the Daily Quiz. Before we begin, there is a very very important announcement that all of you must pay attention. If you are someone who is serious about the UPSC preparation, this is your chance to have a one-on-one -on -one counseling session with our experts. All that you have to do is click on the Google form that is given in the pinned comment section and also in the description of this video. Go to that link, fill up that Google form and our experts will get in touch with you to have a one-on-one -on -one counseling session for all of you so that your path towards a UPSC journey can be made much more. Now having said that, let's begin with the session. First question is on your screen. Consider the following statements with regards to the places of worship act of 1990. number one. It ensures that the religious identity of the place of worship remains the same as it was on 26th of Jan 1950. Second, the act does not apply to ancient and historical monuments or archaeological sites. Three, it does not extend to the specific place of worship known as Ram Janmabhumi Babri Masjid in Ayodhya, including any legal proceeding associated with it. Now, as you know, this law has been a lot in the news with respect to all the survey that is going on in the Gyanwapi Mosque in Varanasi. With respect to that, this question and this kind of a statement is important. If you analyze this, the first statement is wrong. The Places of Worship Act says that the nature and identity of the religious sites of worship will be the same as it was on 15th of August 1947. So the day that India became independent, on that day, whatever was the nature of the religious site, it will remain as such. If it was a Hindu religious site, it will remain like that. If it was a Muslim religious site, it will remain like that. The exception, however, was given to Ram Janbhumi, Babri Masjid, Isho in Ayodhya. And the second statement here is also. Thus, the answer here is B. Any two statements are correct. The first statement is wrong. As you know, this is in the news with respect to the ongoing issue in the Janwapi Mosque. This is where there is a case that had been filed in Varanasi and the High Court has said against the petition that were filed that this 1991 law, the Place of Worship Act, does not bar all the surveys that are going on in the Janwapi. Basically, the High Court has said that the Archaeological Survey of India, all their surveys will continue. This act does not bar those surveys from taking place. Second question. Consider the following statements with regards to lumpy skin disease. First, the first reported outbreak of the disease occurred in Zambia 1929. It is primarily spread between animals through the bite of vectors such as mosquitoes and flies. Third statement, currently India is administering the goat pox vaccine and the sheep pox virus vaccines for this since goat pox, sheep pox and the LSD belong to the same capri pox virus gene. Fourth statement, as per the FAO, the mortality rate of this disease is extremely high that is over 50%. In other words, over half of the animals that catch this eventually. How many of these given statements? Now this is a very, very dangerous disease that has even led to decline in the output of the milk production as well. So it is important and it is in the news. Look at these statements. First is true, the first reported outbreak was in Zambia. Second also is true and so is the third one. There is no specific vaccine made for lumpy skin disease. Rather, the vaccines that are available for goat pox, sheep pox, those are the ones that are used. Third statement is correct but the fourth is wrong. Why? As per the FAO, the mortality rate of this disease is less than 10%. So although this disease is dangerous, although this has led to decline in the milk output, but the mortality rate is not that high. Mortality rate is less than 10%. So less than 10% of the animals affected by it eventually pass away. Correct answer here is C. Any three here are correct. Fourth one here is the reason why we are discussing this question is because a parliamentary standing committee has said that there are gaps in the re data received about this disease. That is, they have raised questions on the government 
they have said that adequate data is not available having said that there are a lot of states that are rushing to gather as many of these vaccines as possible they want to distribute to their farmers who are into animal husbandry because they don't want a decline especially in the milk out next is question number 3 which of these best defines the phrase variant of interest as used by the who with respect to the corona virus it's a variant with specific genetic markers that have been associated with changes to receptor binding reduced neutralization by antibodies second it's a variant for where there is evidence of increase in transmissibility and more severe disease third it's a variant where there is clear evidence that prevention or counter measures in terms of medicines have significantly reduced the effectiveness on none of the above the reason why we are asking this question is there has been an upsurge in the number of corona virus cases being found in states such as kerala and even in certain categories in karnataka as well thus the who has named a new variant as a variant of interest so what exactly is that the answer here is the first one variant of interest is not a variant that has been giving dangerous signals so far the second one where this variant says that it will lead to more severe disease that is called variant of concern so if you have a variant of concern that is more dangerous this first one is a variant of interest that is the who will now look into this variant more seriously because it has been observed that it is leading to reduced neutralization by antibody so nothing to be alarmed about so far but yes in the coming days in the coming weeks we might see the who and the other medical authorities around the world taking action against this reason why we are discussing this is that the who has tagged jn1 strain as the new variant of interest as a covid cases continue to rise in states of kerala and in certain states of and in certain parts of karnataka as well you can see here these are the definitions given by the who of variant of interest and the variant of concern next is question number 4 consider the following statements with regards to borrowing power of the state governments in india is yes? how much money they can borrow how can they borrow money first the normal net borrowing ceiling for the states is fixed at 3% of the gross state domestic product as recommended by the 15 finance commission second over and above additional borrowing of 0.5% of the state gdp has been linked to the performance of in the power sector that is permitted to the states and the third it is article 293 subsection 3 that requires the state government that are indebted to the central government to first seek their permission before having more in other words if a state government owes some money to the central government they cannot borrow more funds from the market before they take permission of the central how many of these given statements are correct all these are all these are correct these are the limits imposed on how much money can the state governments borrow. in fact this is why many state governments are unhappy many state governments say that the central government is kind of partial towards those states that are ruled by their parties while other states are not given that kind of so over here as you can see in these three statements all these three are correct if a state is indebted to the central government they owe some funds to them they have to take permission from the central government before raising any more funds from out the reason why we are discussing this question is because the central government is concerned about certain states opting again for the old pension scheme government of india does not want the states to go back to the old pension scheme so what are they doing they are trying to push states towards the new pension scheme so that the government can have more money because of which the central government has allowed extra borrowing ceiling of 60000 crore for the states only for the national pension scheme or the new pension scheme states that are opting for the old pension scheme would not have this advantage next is the previous year question from this year's prelims which one of the following is the best example of repeated falls in sea level giving rise to present day extensive marsh land is it the bitter kanaga mangroves is it the marakkanam salt pans is it 
नौपाड़ा स्वाम्प और इज इट द रण ऑफ कच आंसर हेयर इज रण ऑफ कच इट इज द रण ऑफ कच हुई इज अ प्राइम एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ प्लेस विच यूज टू बी समर्ज इन वॉटर बट विद रिपीटेड फॉल इन द सी लेवल इट हैज नाउ कन्वर्टेड इन टू अ प्रेजेंट डे एक्सटेंसिव मार्श लैंड now run of kutch is extremely famous lot of tourists visit there there is also a very famous run of kutch festival that is organized highly highly advisable to visit it's an example of a place that has seen multiple sea level fluctuations over time that has led to the present day marshland as we see it was once a part of the arabian sea it was always a shallow part it was never a very deep but it was under the arabian sea for a very very long time but because of the reducing sea level we have seen that this area has now converted into what we call as a marsh next we have the fact of the day and today's fact is about the telecom bill now telecom bill also officially known as the telecommunication bill of 2023 has been introduced in the lok sabha now this bill has a lot of important provisions for example till today if a telecom company has to operate in india they have to look for certain spectrum now when they ask for spectrum from the government that is a band of frequency there is usually auction process that is followed however due to the auction process what happens is the companies have to pay a very very high price so companies had been demanding that for certain cases they should not have to go in an auction there should be a pre fixed price from the government so that auctioning does not increase the price because when you auction a spectrum the companies have to pay a very high price as a result of that what happens is that the company has no option but to actually pass on that cost to the customer and that makes everything more expensive the government also is aware of that the government wants to make certain changes in the bill a lot of companies the companies especially that are now trying to go into the sector of satellite internet they want specific frequency bands from the government they don't want to pay such a high price so companies such as spacex such as amazon even bharti airtel they had been asking the government not to have 100% auctioning process and this bill does give scope for that there will be some allocation as well apart from the normal auction process that is for also for now the government also in the bill says that if certain company has taken certain band but they are not using it the government has the right to take back the unutilized band as well all these are the changes that are being introduced in this law this law also talks about internet services regulation that is the government can actually exempt certain entities in the public interest apart from that the other ones will have to be regulated by the government even if they are supplying internet connections to the public at large now again this has been introduced in the lok sabha but as you know in the lok sabha and in rather both the houses number of members of parliament from the opposition are now negligible because of this past disqualification that has happened so if a bill is introduced in the lok sabha consider it as good as being passed so it will be implemented very well this brings us to the end of today's daily quiz again reminding you If you are serious about your UPSC preparation and you want a one-on-one -on -one counseling session with the experts to understand how to go about your preparation, all that you have to do is fill up the Google form that is given in the description of the video and also in the pinned comment section. Go there, give us your details. Our experts will get in touch with you. Thank you so much for joining in. We'll be here tomorrow with our daily quiz at 6 p.m. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day ahead. Bye bye.